Hi everyone and thank you for joining in today for part two of our scholarship webinar series. My name is Erica Fencourt and I am the scholarship coordinator at the Washington Apple Education Foundation. Before we begin, I just wanted to remind everyone that you can ask questions in the chat box as we go or save them for the end of the presentation. So before we begin <laughs> officially, I just wanted to do a quick recap from our first webinar in October. So in October, we talked about who WAIF is, um, we talked about what scholarships are, we talked about our scholarships, the WAIF scholarships, which we will share about more again at the end. And then we talked about scholarship eligibility. Here's a list of everything we will talk about today. So we will talk about disqualification, tips on staying organized during scholarship season, and we'll talk and we'll start going over the basics of filling out a scholarship application and review what providers are looking for when you fill out the academics and financial assessment sections on your application. So we will start with disqualifications. So last year we had one fourth of the applicants who applied get disqualified. The main reason why students were disqualified was for not following instructions and late attachments or missing attachments. Make sure you ask your letter writers with enough time and remind them to send your letters um, on time and same goes for your transcripts um, when you're requesting them from your school. Even if it's not your fault that we receive these materials late, it, at the end of the day it is still your application and it's your responsibility to make sure that everything is turned in on time. The other unfortunate piece is that some students that fully completed the application on time did not meet our qualifications. Uh, scholarship qualifications should be clearly posted with the award application. Make sure that you read that and if you're unsure what the criteria is, contact the provider prior to starting the application. This will save you a lot of time. Each year we do receive hundreds of applications and we don't have time to review every single application that does not qualify. So we know that you're really busy and we want to respect your time. So I really encourage you all to only apply for the scholarships that you are eligible for or that you qualify for. Another part of disqualification is not following the instructions. Be sure, excuse me, be careful when you read the instructions, especially when it comes to writing your narratives. And once you are finished writing your narratives, reread the instructions so that you are sure that you have met all of the criteria. So for example, um, for our essay, we require students to submit a typed one page essay that is double spaced in a size font 12. Um, we just encourage students to double check, make sure that it is that one page double space because if it's shorter than that or it's too long, your application will get disqualified and it would really be a shame if you did qualify and you spent all of your time filling out the application only to have it disqualified for not following the instructions. So how can you stay organized during the scholarship season? First important thing <laughs> is to do your research and only apply for the scholarships that you are eligible for. If you're not sure whether you qualify or not, co contact your scholarship provider or ask your counselor. Um, as scholarship providers, we send all of our information directly to your high school counselors. And so we, they would be able to tell you what scholarships are available what the deadlines are, and if you give them enough time, they might be able to tell you um, whether or not you qualify for that scholarship. The second thing to keep you organized during the scholarship season is to keep all of your scholarship documents, so your personal statements, your essays, your short answers, your letters of reference, all in one spot, and write your essay and short answers in a Word document or a Google document so that you can make changes to future applications. So a lot of scholarship providers will ask similar questions um, for your short answers, or most of them will ask you for a personal statement. If you have those saved in one convenient location, you will save a lot of time because you don't have to retype those answers every single time and instead you can tweak them a little bit and repaste them onto a new application. Next, when you start applying for scholarships, it can get a little bit hectic because the deadlines will not be the same. Use a planner to make sure that you know which scholarship deadlines are coming up and so that you can keep track of your documents. So for example, in your planner, you can write which application you're applying for and what the deadline is. Um, you can also know who you asked for a letter of reference and when you asked them and maybe even a note of when to follow up with them and same with your transcript. So 
make sure you stay organized by using a planner. And then finally, requesting all of your attachments early for each of the applications that you're applying for. It's a super easy task that you can cross off right off your list right off of the bat. So um, I recommend you all do this. And that way you're not going back and forth trying to figure out how many letters you need. You can request them all at once, pick them up all at once, or have them sent all at once and not have to worry about it when the deadline is approaching. So now we will start with the application basics. So I know that you all know this, but we like to remind students every year because year after year, and especially last year for some reason, we were still having students who were not um, doing these things. And the impression that you create in your scholarship application actually begins quite early. So you wanna make sure that proper nouns are capitalized. So your first name, your parents, first names, last names, your street address. You wanna make sure that your street address is spelled out. You're not abbreviating anything. So if your street address is avenue or street, make sure you spell those out and not just use the abbreviated form of those. Your email address should be professionally appropriate and it should be an email that you are checking regularly because scholarship providers will communicate with students that way. Um, I also like to encourage students to quite possibly not use your school email because I know that some schools don't like students to use their school emails because once they graduate, they may not have access to them. So if you need to change it, you can make it a variation of your first name, your last name and a number, um, your first initial, your last name, um, whatever the, the variation is, but just make sure it's professional that we're able to tell that it is you through your email address and that it's, excuse me, <laughs> and that you are checking it at least once a week. And just like your email, providers may also call you if you are awarded with a scholarship. And so um, make sure that you list a phone number that you will be answering and that your voicemail box is not full um, and that your voicemail recording is actually quite appropriate. And then finally, make sure that you check for spelling and punctuation and not just in the, the contact information section and the short answers and your essays, but throughout the entire application because we review your entire application as a whole and not just that contact information section and your short answers. And then finally, I wanted to remind you to not use texting lingo. Um, I know it's really hard nowadays because we text everyone all the time for everything and so it can get really hard getting out of that habit so try to make sure you spell everything out so next we have academics and this section allows you to communicate how you've prepared in high school to attend the college of your choice so for students with high academics this is an area where you can impress the selection committees with your gpa and your sats or acts and for students with lower GPAs, make sure you use other areas of your application, such as your letters of reference or the essays or the personal statements to communicate why your grades alone might not demonstrate your ability to succeed in college. Um, selection committees do look at much more than a single factor when they're assessing a student's scholarship application. Some providers may ask you for an official transcript, and what this means is that it's been mailed and mail to us in a signed and sealed envelope by the school or email directly to us by um, your counselor or a teacher, uh, not the students. So if you do request an official transcript and you're going to pick it up and mail it to us, make sure you do not open that signed and sealed envelope because we will not accept it otherwise. And then if you're not sure what type of transcript that provider is asking for, call or email because every provider is different and you want to make sure you don't get disqualified for not following the instructions. And then finally here we have the explain your grades. So some applications also have a section on their application that says something along the lines of, is there anything else you would like the selection committee to know? And this is where you will explain your good grades, or explain your grades, excuse me. So if you have good grades, you're gonna explain your good grades, all of the hard work it took you to get them. Maybe you missed out on extracurricular activities so that you could have good grades. Um, maybe you took really hard AP classes or you participated in Running Start. Whatever it is, be sure to not leave that blank. But also explain if your grades are not where you want them to be or if your grades are lower than what you wanted them to be. 
Um, maybe there was a family hardship. Maybe you took really hard classes, but your grades don't reflect it. But the level of coursework was different than a regular English class or so on. Or maybe you have a, a learning disability. So these are all things that we wouldn't know otherwise unless you told us. So make sure that you don't leave this section blank, good or um, lower grades. Make sure you explain because we only know what you choose to share. And if you don't share those things with us, we will just assume, for example, if your grades are lower than what you wanted them to be, maybe we would assume that, um, that you don't care about school or your grades or so forth. So the financial assessment sections, um, this is going to be on most scholarship applications, but it will be especially important for need-based scholarships. Um, generally, when requesting information, the provider is seeking the household income. The household income refers to income included on the annual tax filing submitted by your parent or the head of the household. In this section, you will need your parents' help <laughs> um, to fill everything out, make sure that everything is accurate, it aligns with your financial aid application, any college applications that may have asked for your financial um, information. And make sure you let your parents know ahead of time what forms you may need. So on here, you can see some of the things that may be requested. So your gross annual income, your adjusted gross income, your family's net worth, among other things. Um, some scholarships will also ask you for a college funding plan. And this is where they want to see that you have done your research and you know how much college is going to cost and that you're actively trying to find for ways to pay for college. Um, not just relying on this one scholarship that you're applying for. When you're trying to put together your college funding plan, utilize the cost of attendance report from your identified college or university to identify the costs, and then identify how you plan to cover that total. Options include uh, work study, which is a job on campus, financial aid grants, summer work, parent help, and other scholarships. So or other types of aid, like the ones we covered in the October webinar. Or you can find and talk about ways that you plan on reducing your costs, such as sharing a room, sharing an apartment, uh, utilizing a lesser meal plan, or not taking your own car to college, just so you can save a little bit more on gas. All of these things are really important. And um, you can also show alternatives such as if you receive a certain amount of scholarship funding, you will attend option one college because it's a lesser cost than option two or so forth. So just a quick reminder, we have our final webinar on February 3rd, 2021, which we will which will be a Wednesday at 5.30 p.m., just like this one. And we will cover the college and career plans of your, excuse me, app scholarship applications. We will talk about your extracurricular activities and interests and why they matter. Your letters of reference will show you examples of two good letters of reference, but which one we would rather you submit. And personal statements, short answers, and essays, and how to fill those sections out. So on here, you can see our WAVE scholarship training resources page. We just created this over COVID. Like I've mentioned, it's completely free. You don't have to create an account. Um, there is a step-by-step -step lesson on how to fill out scholarship applications going over everything we've talked about in the webinars up until this point, plus a little bit more. We have more tips, we have resources, and we have advice from two of our selection committee members talking about the importance of academics on your scholarship application and the extracurricular activities and why they matter. Um, you can find our webinars on the resources tab on our website here as well, and this one will be posted at the end of the session. So just really quick, I wanted to share with the, those of you who are joining us today that are new and maybe we're not at our first webinar, um, a little bit about our scholarships. And so we have two scholarship applications and if students are awarded, they're eligible to apply for renewal for up to four undergraduate years as long as they meet the renewal criteria. The first application is the universal scholarship application. And this is for students who have been raised in the tree fruit industry. So meaning their parents currently work in the industry at 
in the orchards and the warehouses, the service providers and so forth, or for students who want to pursue a tree fruit industry degree, such as horticulture, fruit and vegetable management, ag business, um, ag econ, and so on. And students are awarded with the universal scholarship application. They can use it at any two or four year college or university in or out of Washington state. Um, we do have students studying all over the country and one abroad in Canada, but the majority of our students do choose to stay in Washington state just because of affordability and closeness to home. The second application that we offer is the vocational or technical application and this is for students who like to work with their hands who want to pursue a vocational degree such as electrical, welding, HVAC, mechanics and the entire list goes on and the description on our website for this application also includes a list of the certificates and programs that you can that are eligible for this scholarship. If you are awarded with the vocational or technical scholarship, it must be used at an accredited nonprofit vocational school like a Peritech, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And then you can find both of our scholarships um, on the link displayed here on the slide and our deadlines are both March 1st, 2021. So now I will share with you guys what um, our scholarship applications actually look like so you can get familiar with those. So if you click on that link on the screen, the wave.org slash scholarships, it'll open this page here. And so this is right off of our homepage. You go to the scholarships tab, get a scholarship, which will bring you here, or you will type in that URL that we saw on that slide and it'll bring you right here. On here, we have a general description of who qualifies for our scholarship applications. We have a complete list of awards, which are over 500 that fall into both of these scholarship applications. Um, we have a description for our universal scholarship application, a description for our vocational scholarship application, and then more resources if you need help with scholarships. So on here, we also have our scholarship resources page, our contact information, and more tips. So if you click on the universal scholarship application link here it'll open up this tab here and if you've started an application that's really great if you have not that's also okay it allows you to actually preview the application before you apply um, i do like to remind students that once you start an application you do not need to submit it right away you can keep coming back to work on it um, gradually up until the deadline so we will go ahead and preview it and i'll show you what you can find on there Okay, so here we have some pre-qualifying questions. In order to proceed with the application itself, once you actually officially start it, you must answer yes to one of these questions. So it'll ask you if one or both of your parents are employed in the tree fruit industry, if they own a tree fruit orchard or a warehouse, if you're a former graduate of Highland, Brewster, one of these high schools, <laughs> Do you plan to work in the tree fruit industry? So those careers I mentioned earlier, the horticulture, um, fruit and vegetable management, et cetera. Or if you have yourself worked in the tree fruit industry for 12, um, 12 or more months. Next, we have the applicant information. So remember those basics, capitalize your first name, your last name, your city, your state, everything that needs to be. Make sure you use a working phone number. And then you'll answer this question here, which is the description that best describes your current high school or college enrollment. So if you're a full-time high school senior, you would click this option. If you're also a running start student, you would select this option. If you're not in high school anymore and you're a college student, you would select the full college time or full or part-time college student option. And if you're an adult returning to school, you would select the adult returning to school option. You will then list the high school that you graduated from or will graduate from. Um, and then you will answer the following questions. So have you received a scholarship from the Washington Apple Education Foundation in the past? And are you a first generation college student? And what year did you or will you graduate from high school? And these are just for our tracking purposes. This next section is the current college students. Um, or is for current college students. And so if you are a current college student, you will answer yes and answer the remaining questions. 
If you're still in high school or not a college student, you will answer no and skip over these. Next, we have academic performance. So here you will list your high school GPA and if you're in college, you will list your college GPA. And then here's that section I mentioned to you guys about where it says, please briefly describe any information you would like the selection committee to know about your high school or college grades. So try not to leave this section blank. It actually shows that it's required on our application and you have a maximum word count of 100. And then finally, in this section, we ask you what year you plan to graduate with your college or associates or bachelor's degree. Next, we ask for your SAT or ACT scores. We do remind students that it is not a requirement to take these, but if you have them, that's really great and you should definitely fill this section out. We know it may be kind of hard for those students with this past year who were not able to take them because of COVID and we completely understand. So you would fill this section out, same with ACTs. And then here are instructions for transcripts and what we need from you. So official transcripts, where to send them, um, and what should be on them. So your fall 2020 grades, if you're currently in high school or college. And then you would let us know what day you requested your transcripts. Next, we ask you for your college information. So have you, yes or no, um, made a final decision about the college or university you will attend in next fall? And then you will select the college or university if you have made a decision. And if you haven't, you will just proceed to fill these sections out. So your first choice college through your third choice college. And you will also list your college major if you've decided one or decided on one your field of study and your career goals. So if you want to study uh, biology so you can become a doctor, you would list that here. Um, if you want to study criminal justice so you can become a lawyer, you would also list that here, whatever the case is. It's also okay to be undecided or undeclared as long as you have a drive to go to college, which we will talk about at the next webinar. Um, we just want to make sure that students do want to go to college and they're not just going because their family kind of expects them to. So keep all of those things in mind. Next, we have the financial um, assessment information. So this is the, the section that we recommend that you sit down with your parents to fill out or based on your parents' taxes, you may be able to pull some of this information from them. So you should be able to answer this first question on your own if you're 24 or older and financially independent of your parents, yes or no. And then here is where we ask you for different financial information questions. So your AGI, adjusted um, gross income, your family's net worth, how many people are supported by this income and their relationship to you. Um, how many immediate family members will be enrolled in college next fall and their relationship to you. Next, we have the family employment section, and this section is actually quite important for our scholarships because one of our requirements is that parents or students, excuse me, have been raised in the tree fruit industry, and this is how we verify that. So yes, your parents' primary source of income comes from the tree fruit industry, or no, it does not, and how you are connected to the tree fruit industry. Then you would answer if your family owns a tree fruit orchard where that fruit is packaged, and then continue to fill out your father or guardian's um, first name, contact information, whether or not they're employed in the tree fruit industry, um, if they have an orchard or a tree fruit warehouse, their employer, is this a full-time job year round? Do they have a second job? Fill out this information out. And then same for your mother or your second guardian. So same questions for both, just fill those out. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so next we have the current college students, so non-Running Start. So for students who are high school students and in Running Start, then you would answer no <laughs> to this question and skip this entire section. If you are a current college student, you would answer yes and proceed to fill out this information. Next, here is our um, funding for the 2020-2021 school year. So this is that college, or excuse me, yeah, your college funding plan that I was talking about. So 
Here you will do your research. You will insert a number about how much funding you think you will need and how you plan to use it. Um, you will share with us if you will be receiving state or federal financial aid, um, if you've applied for other scholarships. If yes, what are they? And what other sources of funding you plan to use to pay for your education? Next, we have the extracurricular activities, which we will talk about at the next webinar. And there's also more tips on our scholarship resources page. But on here, we, will, we just wanna see how you're spending your time outside of the school day. Um, we ask you for jobs with a brief description. You're gonna fill out all of this information. We ask you for volunteer community service. Fill out the sections. Try not to leave any sections blank. I recommend that students think back to the last four years of high school and try to fill out every single slot, even if it was just about one hour or four hours total at the food bank your freshman year or so forth. School or community group involvement, same thing. Fill out as much as possible. Try not to leave any blank spaces. Leadership roles, if you participate in um, ASB or you're the youth group leader at your church, things like that. And then any award recognition. So if you've received any awards for what groups you received that award, what school year, um, if you received more awards and so on. And then here we just have this extra section that says, explain how you regularly spend your time outside of the school day and school work. So think about only this academic year. It might be a little bit tricky with COVID. We may be a little bit more restricted, but there are definitely things you, you might be doing outside of um, your school day. So make sure you list all of those things. Next, we just ask you for a personal statement. Some applications may ask you to respond to a prompt. We just leave it completely up to the student to answer this question, fill in their personal statement, share about themselves, and paste it here. We ask you for five words that describe you, five skills that you have, and your talents and gifts. We can definitely tell a student's personality when we start to read this section here. We then have your short answer questions, which you can preview them here. Uh, the first question is, if you can meet anyone living or dead, who would it be and why? The next question is, what is the most difficult challenge you have fed, excuse me, faced and how did you overcome it? And then finally, what do you think our country should do to foster unity? There is a minimum, or excuse me, a maximum word count, so make sure you're mindful of that and then make sure you paste your responses here. And then finally, our essays. So here are instructions for the essay. Every application will have specific instructions for their essay section. This is our essay topic this year. How has the tree fruit industry impacted your life? You will need to type your um, essay on a Word document or a Google document and then upload it here, which will then be downloaded when we process your application. Next, we have letters of reference, specific um, instructions for your letter writers, where they should be sent to, by when they should be sent, um, any other information regarding letters of reference. And this year, we are only requiring one letter of reference because of COVID, and we know that it might be a little bit hard to um, request those letters. And so we're only requiring one this year, but make sure you check with every provider because some may still ask for two or three, others may not ask for any. So just make sure you're aware of those instructions. And then finally, before we finish the application, we ask for qualifying questions. So is your parent a member, grower, a employee, or an employee, excuse me, of Treetop? Um, so, special question, or not special, excuse me, um, specific questions for other eligibility for other awards, you will answer those. And then how did you hear about that, about the Washington Health Education Foundation, just for tracking purposes? Was it through your counselor, through a parent? Was it a scholarship presentation or so on? And then you will sign your name and submit your application. So that was the universal scholarship application. And so now if we go back to this page here and we click here to access the vocational or technical scholarship application, it will bring us to this page here. And so same with this application, you don't have to apply in order to preview the application before. 
So we will go ahead and download the preview. This application is actually a little bit shorter and different than the universal application. So in order to continue with the vocational or technical application, students must answer yes to this pre-qualifying question, whether or not their um, degree or certificate falls under this category. If it does not, we would love for you to call us and we can discuss your options and figure out what we need to do to help you. Similarly to the universal application, we will ask for applicant information. So remember those basics, capitalize your first name, your last name, uh, your street address, your parents' first and last names, insert a working cell phone or home phone number with an active voicemail box that is not full. Um, make sure that you select which option best describes your current high school or college enrollment, name of high school, have you received a scholarship from WAPE in the past, are you a first generation college student, and those are just for our tracking purposes. And then here, if you are a current college or vocational technical student, you would answer, oh, including Running Start, excuse me, you would answer yes here and then fill out the remaining questions. If you're not, you would answer no and skip to the next section. Next, we have the academic performance. And so again, this is where we will ask you for your GPA in high school, your GPA in college if you have one, and then brief, briefly describe any information you would like the selection committee to know about your high school or college grades. Then we ask you for your transcripts, let you know what we need by when, um, where they should be sent to, and the date that you requested those to be sent to us. Next, we have your college information. Similarly, so have you made a final um, decision about the institution you will attend for the 2020-2021 school year? So next fall, yes or no? If yes, you're going to select the college, the degree, certificate, or program you plan to pursue, and what your career goal is. So maybe you want to pursue a, the electrical program at Perry Tech so that you can become a journeyman or so forth. So make sure that you're very clear here because this application is reviewed quite differently for vocational students. Next, we have the financial information section, which we just went over in the other application. So you should be able to answer this question by yourself and then the remaining with your parents, or if you are older than 24, you should be able to answer these for yourself. Next, we have the family employment section, how you are connected to Washington State's tree fruit industry. Maybe you are, maybe you are not. Make sure you answer yes or no, um, and then fill out the remaining information. So your father or first guardian's contact information, employer, full-time job year round, and does he, have a, does he or your first guardian have a second job? Same goes for mother and guardian, or second guardian. Um, fill out all of their contact information. Do they have a full-time year-round job? Um, do they have a second job? And so forth. So next we have the current college student for non-running non start students. So if you answer no to this question, you can skip to the remaining sections. If you answer yes, <laughs> you will answer I'm sorry, if you answer no, you will skip to the next section. If you answer yes, you will answer the remaining questions in the section. Here we have that funding for the next fall, the 2021-2022 school year, um, how much funding you will need and how you plan to use it, and other sources of funding that you plan to use to pay for your education. The extracurricular activities section is pretty straightforward. It's very similar to the, um, the one from the universal application, so I, I will quickly go over it. We will ask you for jobs, volunteer and community service, school or community group involvement, leadership roles, and award recognition. Here we have the personal statement. And we do have three short answer questions, which are very different to the universal scholarship application. 
The first one is, how might you and your education serve the tree fruit industry? The next question is, um, what are your preferred tools of trade and what have you created with them? So the committee is always interested in reading about projects that students have worked on that are interesting to them. So maybe you want to study auto mechanics because you love working on cars and one day you want to build and design your own car. Um, whatever the case is, make sure you share all of that information. And then why have you chosen your career path? So again, if you want to build and design your own car at some point, and that's why you're going into auto mechanics, um, you would fill that information out. This application is a little bit different than the universal because we don't ask you for an essay. Instead, it's just these three questions and your personal statements. So make sure that you're very thorough when you are answering them. Finally, we have the letters of reference section. Again, we remind you we are only requiring one letter this year. Um, here are the rules where it should be sent, by when, um, and then we just remind students that any attachments received after March 1st will result in an automatic disqualification. Finally, before we finish the application, um, we ask you how you heard about the Washington Apple Education Foundation. You will type out your name and submit your application. So, that was a little bit about our scholarships, our scholarship application process. And so we have reached the end of our presentation. We hope that you have any questions. We will go ahead and answer the questions after we stop the recording. Um, if you have any questions after we leave here today, you can definitely call us at 509-663-7713. You can email us or you can visit our scholarship page. So thank you for all of those who attended today. and. Thank you for being so attentive. Happy holidays.